Baby, come back. You can blame it all on me. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am finally back. My Wi-Fi is back. I couldn't be happier right now. I am so, so sorry that it made you guys wait a couple of days. We lost power. I didn't know what else to do, but I finally am back. And so in order to celebrate me being back, I decided I'm going to go all out, baby. I'm going to do a top 40 sports cars for under $10,000. You guys love these videos, so why not make it? If you guys want to see a top 50 sports cars for under $10,000, then subscribe because I'm making you guys a promise right now. When I get to 10,000 subscribers, I'll do the top 50, all right? But for today, it's top 40. And guys, guys, by the way, in order to make this list not a million years long, I'm going to be kind of rushing through them. So uh, each car is only going to probably get around like 30 seconds of screen time. Number 40, dead last, but keep in mind that even though it is dead last, all the cars on this list I think are good choices, alright? Number 40 is the Chevy Cabal SS, which came with a 2 liter turbocharged inline 4 that made 260 horsepower and it was front wheel drive and it actually is a pretty decent choice for a daily driver, but the looks, they just aren't there in my personal opinion, and the aftermarket community is very small so it, for it, so if you're like a clout chaser like myself, I'm gonna be honest, uh, probably not the best choice. Number 39 is the Mercedes W124 AMG, which came with a 2 liter inline 4 that made 108 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive, and that is the reason that I put it this low. Uh, they are, they're pretty slow. Uh, on top of that, the engines themselves, they can't really handle that much power. Um, it is just an inline 4 and a Mercedes inline 4. It's not the best engine, and they are an old Mercedes. But it just it looks really cool and i heard if you buy one scarface himself is gonna come up to you and give you like pat on the back number 38 is the mazda miata na and before you comment down below and start trying to stab me in my back let me explain it came with a 1.8 liter inline four that made 138 horsepower that right there is already not that good that's a very low number and it was rear wheel drive and it did only weigh a little over 2,000 pounds making it a very fun car to drive and that is a good thing but the only reason that i put it this low is guys right now they are insanely overpriced and if you're a tall dude like myself it might literally Literally be impossible for you to drive one keep that in mind I feel like people forget about that if you are tall you can't drive a Miata also everyone talks about them they're everywhere everyone knows a Miata is a great choice so I just I had to put it this low number 37 is a bit of an underrated legend it's the Mazda RX-7 FB 3S which came with a 1.1 liter two rotor rotary engine that makes only 100 horsepower while also being rear wheel drive but once again, it was extremely lightweight, meaning you can get up to speeds of 120 miles per hour easily. With 100 horsepower, you can get 120 miles per hour out of this car. That's insane. I don't recommend you do it, but it can be done. They are also very cheap, and they look really cool to me, but they're an awful choice for a daily driver. Number 35 is the Lexus GS300, which came with a 3-liter inline 6, making 225 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive of course since it's a lexus but unfortunately they didn't come in manual all right keep that in mind they looked awesome and they had the naturally aspirated 2jz in them which means you know you could get it to some quick boy speeds but i love manual you probably love manual and this car didn't come in manual and it just makes me sad Number 34 is the Honda Civic SI 8th generation, which comes with a 2 liter inline 4 that makes 197 horsepower, and it was front wheel drive since they are a Civic, and since they are a Civic, you get what you expect. It's an extremely reliable engine with cheap parts laying around, great gas mileage, but just don't expect to like turn heads in one of these and you'll be golden. They're not a super freaking like sought after hype mobile of a car, but if you really don't care about that, then it's a great choice. Number 33 is the Mazda RX-8, which came with a 1.3 liter two rotor rotary engine making 232 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive and had some freaking interesting doors on it, baby. Uh, this car is actually extremely cheap right now due to people just not liking it. So if you do want one, get it now. Uh, in my opinion, they aren't that cool uh, and they are unreliable. So I would personally stay away from them, but if you really like the RX-8, go for it. It is still a very fun car. 
Number 32 is the Subaru BRZ slash Scion FRS slash Toyota GT86. And it came with a two liter inline four making 205 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. And before you say that that is too slow, since everybody says that these cars are slow, it really isn't. It's pretty much a new Miata. So if you know how to use that 200 horsepower that it has, you'll have a blast. Yes, it's not a fast car in a straight line. You're not gonna win any races on the highway with it, but they're not meant for that. They're meant to go fast around corners. Also, these cars are a little hard to find under $10,000, but can be done if you're patient. Number 31 is the Toyota Supra Mark III, which came with a three liter inline six, making 200 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive, of course, and looked super freaking cool and had pop-up headlights, and if you want one, you better get your hands on it fast because honestly, to me, I see these cars getting more and more popular by the day and I think that they're probably only going to go up in price. So if you want a Mark III Supra, buy one now before they call it, become Mark IV Supra prices. Top 30. Number 30 is the Lexus LS400 with came with a 4 liter V8 making 290 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive and looks so unassuming. They look like just boring little sedans. So people are falling in love with them. People love that. All right. People like sleepers and this is a sleeper. It is so cool that people People like this kind of old little sedan because now it gets to show the power of the car community like we find one car that we're like wow that's pretty damn cool and now everybody knows about it and i like that but also hate it it's kind of like a curse but anyway i only didn't put it higher because it once again didn't come in a manual transmission Number 29 is the Audi S4 B5, which came with a 2.7 liter twin turbocharged V6, making 261 horsepower, and it was all wheel drive because Audi Quattro, baby! And it's also my personal favorite Audi, but I tried to make the list not about my personal opinions on the looks of the car, so I didn't put it any higher. But it definitely is a great car. I just don't think it's much better than the other upcoming cars that we have to go over. Number 28 is the Mazda Speeds 3, which came with a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four, making 263 horsepower. And it was front wheel drive and a hatchback, but it looked pretty damn good for a hatchback. Personally, I don't really like hatchbacks, but this one, this one did it really god dang well, all right? It looked super cool. Now, unfortunately, they are pretty underrated, but that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. It's good for you if you wanna buy one, but it's a bad thing if you wanna like get a big community going. Number 27 is the Ford Focus ST, which came with a two liter turbocharged inline four, making 252 horsepower. And it was front wheel drive and a hatchback, of course. So depending on who you are, you might like it, you might hate it. I don't like hatchbacks, so I don't really like the car, but it still is an unbelievably good daily driver and also can give some bitch boy civics a run for their money when it needs to. I'm trying not to swear on my videos because then I get demonetized. I just did it anyway though, because I had to. And I'm talking about the focus you have to. Number 26 is the Mazda RX-7 FC3S, which came with a 1.3 liter turbocharged two rotor, which made 179 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive, and it was obviously a huge jump from the previous generation, which is why I put it higher, but the car looks a little worse in my opinion. I said it. I think the FBRX7 looks better than the FC. I'm sorry. It's still one of my favorite cars ever built, but just not better than the other RX7s in terms of looks alone. But it is better than the FB in terms of performance. So that's why I put it higher. Number 25 is the Volkswagen GTI Mark IV, which came with a 1.8 liter turbocharged inline four, making 200 horsepower on the dot. 1.8 T never lose and it was front-wheel drive and a hatchback if that's what you need and there's an absolutely massive community around this little boy so if that's once again something you need it's a great choice just be careful since they do tend to have a lot of problems and people like to beat them up so be careful when going to buy it number 24 is the fourth generation honda prelude which came with a 2.2 liter inline four making 200 horsepower on the dot once again and it was front-wheel drive as well but I put it one step higher than the Mark IV since it is a Honda engine that's naturally aspirated. So the power potential is a lot higher than the power potential out of a Mark IV GTI. But once again, it doesn't really matter if you aren't trying to get like a crazy amount of power. It doesn't, they'll both do the job perfectly fine. Also, these are easily one of the most underrated Hondas ever built. Number 23 is the Ford Mustang New Edge. Ford Mustang GT New Edge, my bad. And it came with a 4.6 liter V8 making 260 horsepower. And it was rear wheel drive and a big old American V8. Yes, sir. Yeah. This car is for a select group of people. You either like Mustangs or you don't like Mustangs. And if you do like Mustangs, just keep in mind they aren't toys, okay? They are fast. They can hurt you. They can hurt other people. So don't be doing donuts in the 7-Eleven parking lot because there might be Kathy trying to walk her 
child out to the car and you might, you know, get in a little bit of trouble. Alright, just be careful. Number 22 is the Acura Integra GSR, which came with a 1.8 liter inline 4, making 170 horsepower. And it was front wheel drive, of course, and looked freaking epic, man. It looked like gamer 360 no scope radical i personally love the looks of these cars so much and think that if you were to get a honda car this one or the rsx is the way to go based off looks alone uh the civic community is a little larger though so that's why i didn't put the integra higher uh spoiler alert the civic is coming up Number 21, who could have guessed it? It's a 6th generation Honda Civic Si, which came with a 1.6 liter inline 4, making 160 horsepower. And it was front wheel drive once again. And yes, I know we literally just talked about a Honda, but they're pretty damn similar in my personal opinion. And I just think that the Civic deserves one little measly spot higher since it does have that bigger aftermarket support for it. But besides that, they are pretty much the same. Oh boy, alright, halfway through the list, I'm starting to lose my breath, but I'm going to get this video out. Number 20 is the Dodge Charger RT, coming with a 5.7 liter V8, making 368 horsepower, and it was rear-wheel drive, and yes, I know that that sounds like a great combo, but guess what? The car didn't come with a manual transmission, which just makes me want to curl up in a ball, cry myself to sleep, and just start punching people. It makes me want to punch people. Besides that though, the car is super freaking cool and it's a pretty much a cheaper challenger. Uh, if you can deal with the automatic transmission, amazing car. Number 19 is the Audi S4 B7, coming with a 4.2 liter V8, making 340 horsepower, which is a pretty damn good number for this list. And it was all-wheel drive, which is the first all-wheel drive car on this list. And it did everything just so well. Like, Audi, to me, is just an all-around respectable brand. And every time they make a new S4, it exceeds my expectations. So there's really not much to say about it besides it's good. Toast to Audi, I guess. They're making great cars. I think 19th is, is a great place to put it. Number 18 is the second generation Toyota MR2, coming with a 2 liter inline 4, making 135 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive and mid engine, baby. And now, hear me out. I know this car is extremely dangerous, I know this car is not that fast, I know this car is a pain to work on, and I know this car is not that cheap. But I kind of cheated on this one since they're just so legendary. I mean, look at the car, man. It looks cool. I'm sorry. I know it shouldn't be this high on the list, but it just it looks awesome, all right? And it's got pop up headlights, it's mid engine, all right? It deserves a spot. Number 17 is the Nissan 300ZX, coming with a 3 liter V6, making 222 horsepower. And it was rear wheel drive and one of the most annoying cars in the world to work on, supposedly. A lot of people say that you do not want to buy a 300ZX if you have to do engine work to it because it's a pain in the rectum. They also had a T top, which is always a plus. I personally love T tops. And if Lamborghini freaking styles one of their cars after yours, you know you're winning. Number 16 is the BMW 328i E36, coming with a 2.8 liter inline 6, making 190 horsepower. And it was rear wheel drive and came in so many different options for whichever one your little itty bitty heart desires. It's easily one of my favorite BMWs to ever come out in terms of looks alone, but for just about everything else, it is also really good at that. It's also one of the best starter drift car, hands down. Uh, there's no arguing that. Number 15 is the Nissan 200SX S14, coming with a 2 liter inline 4, making 140 horsepower. And it was rear wheel drive, and yes, these will be hard to find under $10,000. And yes, that is not a high number for horsepower, but they actually aren't as hard as you would think. And if you do pick one of these up, you just know how much potential that these cars have. They are one of, if not the best starter drift car ever built. They look really good. They have a really reliable engine in them. They're a great car if you can find one for under 10k. Number 14 is the Catfish Chevy Camaro, which came with a 5.7 liter V8 making 320 horsepower. And it was rear wheel drive, of course, since it's a Camaro, and I think it looks hideous, personally. But, looks to the side, it's a really good budget race car. Any car that comes with an LS and a manual transmission is a good freaking car, and that's what this thing did you gotta respect that i mean i understand the car doesn't look that good but if we're going to just completely dismiss looks of a car it is a great car number 13 is the lexus sc300 coming with a three liter inline six making 225 horsepower and it has the same engine in it as the gs300 that we talked about a little bit earlier and it also did come with rear wheel drive but on top of all that, it came with a manual transmission. And do I think that a manual transmission changes a car's place in my top tens this dramatically? Not really. But when we're talking about old cars, and these cars are pretty damn old, D3 
The automatic transmissions back then were not even nearly as good as they are today, and the manuals are a lot faster and a lot more fun in general, so yeah, I think it deserves a spot. Number 12 is the Lexus IS300, which is the exact same car. It came with a 3 liter inline 6, making 225 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive. And yeah, that's pretty much the same exact car as the last one, except it has easily the biggest following out of any of the three the gs300 is300 and sc300 the is300 is the most popular and for good reason it came with the manual transmission but it had a shorter wheelbase than the sc300 and was lighter than both of them making it the best choice number 11 is the dodge neon srt4 coming with a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four making 230 horsepower and it was front wheel drive and the engines were tanks these cars can handle so much power it's ridiculous and they look pretty damn good too now be careful when buying one since most people modded them and did it very badly but if you can get one that's pretty in good condition it's a great choice number nine is the bmw 330ci e46 which came with a three liter inline six making 235 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive or all wheel drive depending on which one you need and i think that this is exactly the same as the e36 it's just better in every single way the looks are good i don't think it beats it in looks i think they look equally as good uh, but where it really excels in is cheap fun these cars are actually cheaper than the e36 uh and are a lot better better since they're faster they have more power out of the gate uh easily one of the best starter drift cars once again since it is a beamer so number eight is the acura rsx type s which came with a two liter inline four making 201 horsepower and it was front wheel drive and the engine in this car is one of the most legendary engines ever built and you can get one for under five thousand dollars that's right that is a great deal in my opinion on top of that it's pretty much a civic so parts are cheap. The car looks extremely good compared to other Hondas in my personal opinion, and it came with that extremely legendary engine. Number seven is the Infiniti G37 Coupe, which came with a 3.7, I did not plan that, 3.7 liter V6 making 330 horsepower, and it was either all wheel drive or rear wheel drive, which is a freaking cool choice, but the rear wheel drive one is definitely the more fun option that you should definitely go for. Actually, no, you shouldn't. Buy the all-wheel drive ones so that the rear wheel drive ones drop in price and I can pick them up. Uh, these cars shared the same exact engine that was in the 370Z, meaning you know you will have a blast if you pick one of these up. Number six is the Hyundai Genesis Coupe, coming with a 3.8 liter V6, making 340 horsepower. Say what? and it was rear wheel drive and looked absolutely astonishing in my personal opinion also this is a pretty damn new car which surprises me to say the least and it has a very small community for it meaning that anything you do to it will be something a little special that nobody else has done which is definitely something cool it's underrated it's extremely underrated it's a 3.8 liter v6 making 340 horsepower while being rear wheel drive say what but here we go baby top five this is getting a little it's getting a little froggy i'm not gonna lie Number five is a Subaru WRX Hawkeye, coming with a 2.5 liter turbocharged flat four, making 225 horsepower, and it was all wheel drive, of course, and the engine in these is not unreliable, all right? Don't believe what you read on the internet. Then again, I am also a guy on the internet, but I promise that if you take good care of this car and don't try and add unnecessary power and boost, it'll last you a while. Don't listen to them. Number four is the Ford Mustang GT S197, coming with a 4.6 liter V8, making 315 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive, say so what? In a bit of an obvious choice, because it is a freaking Mustang, but it was obvious because it was good. Listen, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys, I don't like Mustangs, but I cannot be biased. This car is very good for under $10,000, and you'll have a blast in one. I, that hurts me to say, but it's true, all right? It's true. Now, we're getting into the top three of the top 40 cars. Do you guys, if you guys can try putting that right now in the comments, your predictions on what the top three are going to be in order, and I'll give you a cookie or something if you get it right. I'm sure you guys can guess at least one of them. Second place... You have to, you just, you just gotta show love to this car, right? It's the car we all wanted when we were children. The Chevy Corvette C5 coming with a 5.7 liter V8 making 405 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. And this is the only car on this list that got into the 400 horsepower range all while still being extremely lightweight and a naturally aspirated freaking American V8, baby.
American yeah, Republican Donald Trump's my president type deal. Daily driving isn't the best choice in one of these, but it can be done. And even if you don't get the really good Z06 model, the base model still has 350 horsepower and is still a beast. Also, it's a freaking LS, man. But there's no other car in the world that I think is better for under $10,000 for just literally everything than the BMW 335i E9X generation, E90, you know what I mean. Uh, and it came with a 3 liter twin turbocharged inline 6 that made 300 horsepower and it was either all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. And on top of that, you could also get it in either a convertible, wagon, sedan, or coupe, with the coupe obviously being the most sought after. Um, Yes, I know that this 300 horsepower tur twin turbo inline six doesn't sound like anything that could would win you over, but this car does everything great except for the fact that the engine tends to have some problems. That same engine that has those problems though is also an extremely good engine called the N54, which is commonly referred to as the Dur German 2J and for a good reason. It is super easy to get this car to at least 700 horsepower. And even if you don't want to freaking race this car, it's still a great choice since it does have an all wheel drive option and it's not f that quick off the line. You don't have to you know, be racing all the time, but if you want to, you can. It's the perfect, in my personal opinion, car that you can buy for under $10,000, no matter what you're really looking for. Maybe if you're going for like a daily driver, just buy a Camry, but um, besides that, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful, amazing, amazing masterpiece of a car. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, my stand has been taken apart, so I'm holding the camera right now, but that is the end of this list. Thank you guys so much for watching. Top 40 cars, finally done this is probably going to take a while to edit but who cares i'm gonna get it out to you guys because i feel so bad for you know leaving you guys with no videos for a couple of days so here you guys go there's a, a big boy a big boy list anyway guys thank you so much for watching let me know any cars i missed because there is obviously a lot of cars that i missed um there's you can say any car under ten thousand dollars is a good choice so let me know some that i missed because maybe when i reach ten thousand subscribers i'll do the top 50 and then i'll use your cars in that one okay all right Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Das Vidania. Have a nice day.